Hello guys, good day. This is Anna of Reinforcement Club. Today we are going to talk about transactional versus relational relationship. So, this transactional and relational relationships are two distinct approaches in interpersonal rela connections, in building relationships. Now, when I say mu mutual, you know, mutual relationship, which is based on trust, care, and respect to one another, this is basically relational. While transactional means this type of relationships are based on, are focused on exchanging something of value, such as money, goods, services, or information. Now, first of all, I am going to bring about transactional relationship first. I'm going to talk about it. Now, this so-called transactional relationship is mostly short-term, impersonal, and of course, goal-oriented. So you can see, you can notice this in businesses, you know, it, like even countries to country, country to country, you know, the presidents, they meet up together, they agree, and they help each other. That's transactional relationships. And you can even notice transactional relationship in the workplace or even in the grocery store, you know, grocery store clerk or your taxi driver or an online seller. You don't need to know much about them or care about their feelings as long as they deliver what you expect, then that's it. That's the completion of the transaction. Now, the good thing about transactional relationships is that it, it is efficient. And uh, efficient because it is task oriented. It is uh, focused on uh, specific goals or outcome efficiently. So as long as we get to the finished product, we get to the outcome that we desire, then, you know, and then we're both happy, win-win relationship, then that's, it. That's, that's what it is about. And when it comes to transactional relationship, you have clear expectations. You know, you know which factors are involved. It could be good services, favors, expectations, and they they are often straightforward, explicit, obvious. And uh, you know, also transactional relationship, there is minimal emotional investment involved. You don't really have to, you know, to touch, catch feelings. Unless you do, it's a choice. You just make a transaction, then. You know, do the th there's a fulfillment of the transaction in the end, in the short term period. So it is easier because you know it it is less. It ha you don't need to invest your emotion to a transactional relationship compared to the relational ones. You know you have to really get involved. Uh, you have sometimes you get fragile, vulnerable. But transactional, no, no, absolutely no. Even though transactional relationship, relationships doesn't have to, you know, involve any feelings, the good thing about it is that it has, it will surely result into a, a mutual benefit. Both parties can get the benefit from the exchange, leading to a sense of fairness and reciprocity in both parties involved. Now, the consequence, the cons, or the, the downside of transactional relationship is that it is superficial, no hard feelings, lack of depth and genuine emotional connection. And, you know, transactional relationship has limited scope. So you can also uh, notice this in the workplace that you just have to do your job and the bo your boss has just to do her job too. So... No hard feelings, just get to the end result. And that's what it is about. It is what it is. And as long as no, there'll be no problems at the end of the day, then all everybody happy. And uh, another thing, another setback of, of this uh, transactional relationship is that there will be a potential exploitation. So there will be a tendency that the other party could exploit you 
without considering your well-being because of course there's no hard feelings they turned out to be something else they can cut off the relationship anytime after compromising it and you know since this is a transactional relationship you have to let the other party know that you are still interested you still have to let them know that you are you know you, you, they can always count on you so in other words it will incur some sort of uh, time effort and resources it's a give and take when they do something you have to expect that in some point they're going to ask something so it depends on your terms and conditions so to be able to build a transactional relationship you have to communicate your expectations first and foremost that is important that will be your boundaries and to expand those boundaries you have to talk about it and that's the good thing about transactional relationship with terms and conditions upfront to avoid misunderstanding so that is why transactional relationship makes it so efficient with clear expectations and mutual benefits it has to be under terms and conditions to avoid manipulation to be able to build transactional a good a better transactional relationship other than you know having a clear communication you have to be some transparent to to the other parties transparent about your intentions motivations and limitations to build trust and credibility of your sincerity with your relationship to the other parties like for example you know in different countries the US and Philippines their friends together mutual friends give and take and sometimes you know during the 30 the 30 time ex president Duterte so we're close to China you know Chinese president so give and take so there is transparency with their relationships with terms and conditions with clear intentions and of course when you have these terms and conditions and transparency it'll be fair for both sides or to any parties involved uh, there will be like a, you know when there is fairness for, for everybody that would be a good deal of reciprocity and again mutual benefit for all the parties involved and to be able to really you know to update your sincerity to let them know consistently that you are still you know an active alliance to the other party you're still interested to have business with them you need to do follow-ups maintain a regular communication and follow-up to address any issues or concern that may arise during or after the transaction or if you don't have transaction you still need to remind them that you know you you are still sensible you are still interested with their service you might even gonna give them a, a gift for their anniversary you know company anniversary 50th anniversary so get in touch so when it, that's that's when it comes to transactional relationships so once again you have to build communication keep the transparency and fairness and follow up follow up follow up and when you are consistent about this you might gonna level up to you know something personal you might gonna get uh, level up the relationship with the CEO with the people involved into something a little bit personal but you have to keep the terms and conditions of the relationship now the other way around on the other hand relation relational relationships so as I've mentioned before this relationships are based on mutual trust respect and care to to one another so this relationship relationships are often long-term value-oriented so this means that you know these relationships are you know you get involved usually the people get involved in this are your your family your friends your mentor you know them well 
you care about their well-being as well as your own. You don't expect anything in return except their loyalty, support, and honesty. So it doesn't matter. It, you don't really count on the 50-50 on this. You give and take. No, not necessarily in terms of relational relationships. Sometimes you are, you're giving out 80% and they're just giving away, giving back to you 20% to, to make this relationship work out. But once again, you know, this is based on loyalty, support, honesty, and love for romantic relationships. For the relationship to work as much, as long as forever. Now, the, the good thing about relational relationships is that you can create an emotional connection to, to, to the other, to other person, to other people. Because you, you prioritize, you have to prioritize empathy and understanding to foster the bonds between the individuals around you. So there'll be emotional connection and there will be trust and support since you have connection, emotional connection together. So you trust each other, you rely on each other, and you share vulnerabilities without fear or, or without fear of judgment. So in other words, in terms of relational relationships, there are feelings involved, all sorts of feelings. Unlike transactional relationships, no, nada. No hard feelings. And the good thing about uh, relational relationships is that it, it is based on long-term satisfaction. So they, you know, they offer, this type of relationship offers companionship, intimacy, and a sense of belongingness. It will help you grow. As well as, you know, since this is merely, primarily based on feelings and, you know, you want the best thing for other people. You want the best for them. In other words, you have to be flexible too. Unlike transactional relationships, relational ones are not bound by specific transactions or goals or tasks. Allowing for a great, greater flexibility and adaptation, adaptation to Changing circumstances. Since life is changing, the situation is changing, people are changing, you also have to alter your way of dealing with these people since, you know, this involves feeling, this involves connection and bond, this is long term, so you have to deal with the changing, changing environment, changing life, changing person, changing personality, so you got to be flexible. You also got to change your way or you change yourself as well as necessary if you need to. Now, the downside of having this relational relationships is that it is time consuming. Time consuming in a way that it requires, definitely requires significant time and effort. As this type of relationship involves ongoing communication, which could compromise our emotional investment. Sometimes we, since, of course, feelings are involved, uh, we, it makes us feel down and it's time consuming. And sometimes having a relational relationships, sometimes the, the expectations are unclear. So you have to read between the lines sometimes, you know, we, this is long term. This is building connection uh, long term. So you got to keep it up your, with yourself and to, to other person involved. And sometimes uh, this might lead to misunderstandings or conflict if not effectively communicated, if those expectations are not being you know, uh, given out by the other party or by yourself. And you know, when you are in a relational relationship, there will be a great, of course, there will be, there's a great tendency that you have to be vulnerable. You have to open up yourself and there will also be, that's why there, there's a tendency, a, a great tendency that you're going to get hurt in some point. You're going to be, you know, your ego will be hit. So there will be an exposure of feelings which can be uncomfortable or risky. Because, 
you're also going to be exploited to. You're also going to be manipulated to in, tr- in relational relationships without terms and conditions. Well, I'm not saying that this is wrong, but it happens and we got to deal with it. You know, after dealing with it, once the problems is resolved, we get, we get through it. And you know, the good thing about it is that the bond, the relationship will be tougher, stronger, better in time. And you know, when, when there is, you know, since feelings are already involved, there will be potential conflicts, conflicts in relational relationships due to heightened emotions and conflicts requiring effective conflict resolution skills to make the relationship work out, whatever it takes. If both parties are committed to keep the relationship, so they have to change their ways or the other has to compromise. It depends on the solution. Now to, to better build a relational relational relationships you know you have to be a, a, an active listener uh, with empathy to understand the needs feelings and perspectives of the other person you have to be open in communication because sometimes sometimes we ourselves cannot read between the lines as well as the other parties we just uh, leave and we expect the other parties to to understand us but sometimes it takes it takes words to to really completely be understood we have to understand the other party that that person couldn't get it couldn't get what we feel couldn't get that we we, we feel hurt about his or her action so we need to say it sometimes that person could be slow in getting it so we need to verbalize our feelings our concerns our thoughts openly and with all due respect and to be able to build a, a better relational relationship, you have to invest time. So since you are into long-term bond, long-term connection, you have to you know, share activities, experiences, and quality time together to get to know the person well, you know, so that you'll be able to know if this relationship still, you know, we st- would you still want to work things out would you still want to continue having relationship with this person? And most importantly, with all the ups and downs of the relationship, of every relationship and in life, you have to do your best to resolve conflicts. Develop conflict resolution skills to address disagreements uh, or misunderstandings constructively and prevent them from escalating. Otherwise, the relationship will break down. Well, before the relationship breaks down, there there will be communication breakdown first, and then resentment, and then relationship breakdown, break up. Now, both types of relationships are important because you know transactional relationships. They it is crucial for conducting businesses, negotiation, agreements, and achieving specific goal. In terms of teamwork or you know if you have partnership goals transactional rela- relationship is essential overall and the same is true with relational relationships it is vital for personal well-being providing emotional support in temis- intimacy and a sense of belongingness to every individual now to balance the to strike the balance between transactional and relational relationships it's important to really you know first thing to understand the context you know where are we at what is this about recognize the context in which the relationship operates so are we in the workplace are we in the business transaction are we focusing on the task? Are we, are we focusing on the outcome? So if that's the case, you have to keep the transactional relationship. On the other hand, personal relationships typically require a relational approach. 
emphasizing emotional connection, support, and intimacy. And sometimes you could, this could interchange. For example, in a teamwork. So you can use transactional relationship in the teamwork by stating the goal, the aim, and the terms and conditions. While working on each of your team, you have to do personal relationship. You have to support your team. You have to get to know your team. You have to really look after the well-being of your teammates. So that is relational. So consider the nature of interaction and the expectations of, all, of both parties involved. So sometimes we need to use interchangeably the transactional and relational relationships. So you have to ask yourself, are you primarily engaging in a task-oriented exchange or is there an opportunity to deepen the connection on a personal level? Sometimes you need to support each other because when we are in a business, we have, we, in some point, we also have to act in a people's business. We have to support each other, you know, especially when you are a, a, a business owner, you have to keep the loyalty of your employees. You have to keep the top performers of your company. You have to make sure that, that your employees 100% support you. And you cannot do this by just merely implementing transactional relationships. You have to be concerned about their well-being too. You have to support them. You have to be transparent to them. You have to get to know them too. You have to let them know that you care. <laughs> Understanding the, con the context. You could use it interchangeably. Now, in terms of using it interchangeably, in that way, you, are, you have to be flexible to strike the balance which is number two. Be adaptable in your approach. If you're working on a project with your colleagues, you may initially focus on transactional aspects like setting goals, deadlines. But when you go, to, when you go through those team meetings, you have to incorporate relational elements for, like, by fostering collaboration, empathy, and mutual support to your teammates to one another. Relationships do evolve over time. Sometimes you started out in a transactional relationship and then you turn out to be, this. your teammates turn out to be your good friends, your best friends. So flexibility. And number three is, you know, to build a better, you know, to strike the balance between transactional and relational relationships is that you have to do prioritization. Assess the priorities and goals of the relationship to determine which aspect is transactional and relational. So in personal relationship, so with your, this, I'm talking about your, with your close friends, your best friends, your family, or it could be your mentors, significant others, it's important to allocate time and effort to nurture this connection, to have meaningful conversations, experiences, and act of kindness, to, to nurture the relationship. And on the other hand, in professional or business relationship, prioritize transactional aspects, efficiency, productivity, and uh, heading towards the common objectives. Focus on clear communication, setting expectations, and delivering results in a timely manner. So, like in the workplace, you, you have a common goal every day to finish the job. So that is the priority, not the personal relation, not the chit-chat. So always remember that, yes, we do have different sorts of relationships, you know, as we deal with different people, but prioritize the, the most important relationship that, uh, you know, that it has to be done. The job has to be done in spite of, in the midst of all sorts of relationship you have in the workplace. Get the job done first. Get the transactional relationship prioritized. 
and then you know when it's done you can do the chit chat you can have bonding you can talk about anything under the sun with your best friend colleagues anything so prioritization after the job is done now another thing to build a you know to strike the balance of a, of these two relationships is that integration you have to look for opportunities to integrate transactional and relational elements within the same relationships rather than viewing them as a mutually exclusive so sometimes you know it's important to be like when you are in the office with your best friend you know it's really it's really good to have fun yes indeed but you know when you have a task to finish you have to prioritize those tasks and it's important to take the feedback not personally so that you can you can track your progress accurately and uh although you are hitting your goals every day with your best friend with your bestie in the workplace you could also you know still cultivate the relational bond sharing personal experiences you could be in the workplace or on the break time we could be outside work you could still offer encouragement with your bestie to your besties demonstrate genuine care and support to each other's gr- growth but in the most part it's important to really integrate the transactional and relational aspects because you know if it's I- imagine if it's what if it's all just about personal or relational relationships you're just working without an aim you know what are you doing at work you have to have an aim and in order to get to that aim to get it done you have to prioritize the transactional relationship but it doesn't mean that it all it's all just transactional relationship you have to mix it up with relational too to make everybody happy to make everybody feel important and lastly most importantly to strike the balance between relational and transactional relationship is that you have to maintain open and transparent communication to ensure alignment between transactional and relational expectations clearly state the the goals and responsibilities as well as the boundaries in the transactional re- interactions to avoid misunderstandings or conflict and you can also foster honest and empathetic communication in relational transactions to deepen the understanding trust connection and support you know with all the people involved so you can use transactional and uh, relational relationship in the workplace in business in business it depends but in workplace working on you know hitting the target hitting the the sales you can interchangeably use transactional and relational relationships with clear communication and you know encourage feedback and dialogue to address any discrepancies or tensions between transactional and relational dynamics so since you already have a like a clear clear goals and responsibilities as well as boundaries for any conflicts that conflicts that may arise you have to address it uh, with all the respect as fast as you can to to come up with a mutually agreeable solutions that honor the needs of all parties involved so so you can attain success together so when the team is successful the company is successful you'll be happy going to work and in the most part everybody's happy in going home so go for gold now balancing transactional and relational aspects in relationship requires requires mindfulness flexibility and willingness to adapt to the involved needs and dynamics of each interaction so it's just important to really you know be mindful about the transition of these two types of relationship and prioritize which is the most important type of relationship at the moment based on the scenario like as i've said earlier you can't be just 
totally 100% personal in personal relationship at work because you have to do jobs you have you have to hit the goal you have to finish the job at the end of the day so everybody will be happy by integrating both dimensions effectively you can cultivate healthier more harmonious and mutually beneficial relationships in various contexts so not only in workplace it could be in the family together when you have a goal for example you've agreed with your spouse that you're going to lose weight so if that is a priority for both of you you know this relational you know the mute, the personal relationship must not be a priority when you are when you want to try or do your best in hitting your goals because in terms of personal relationship you would understand your spouse that you know he's he's actually lazy so he just didn't under, he did, he just didn't exercise today so when you are hitting your goal you have to prioritize transactional relationship at the moment so that you and your spouse can successfully be confident enough to really hit the goal to to lose weight depending on you know the the amount of weight you want to to lose or it depends on the goal so you can use it interchangeably but never forget to prioritize what type of relationship is applicable in the context in other words these two relationships are important in our daily life so if you ever like this uh, message today you can share it to your family and friends you can follow me in YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I am also in YouTube Podcasts. This is Anne of Reinforce Me Club. And I do appreciate your time. Let us help each other around the world. Thank you very much once again. Have a lovely day.